<laughs> it's maddening. No, there are no women like this. No, no young women? Yeah, or youngish women. <laughs> no, no beautiful slash sexy women or sexy women with some classical training. <laughs> 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 you can actually pronounce the word degradation without a tutor. Ha! <laughs> no, honey, honey, the book Vanda is 24, for God's sake. Back in those times, a woman of 24 would have been married. She would have had five kids and, and, and tuberculosis, okay? She would have been a woman. Those women of 24 these days sound like six-year-olds on Keeley. No, 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 no. I saw 35 incompetent actresses today. Even the ones pushing retirement didn't have the stuff. Anyone who does is either shooting a series or isn't going to do this for a nickel a week. Yeah, and the stupidity. I mean, they, they, they bring along props and whole sacks full of costumes. And, and, and whatever happened to femininity? I mean, bring along some of that, please. Women of 24 can't even play feminine these days. I mean, I'd be a better Vonda than most of these girls, and all I'd have to do is put on a dress and a pair of nylons. <laughs> Vonda's got to be out there somewhere, but at this point, it's just... Hello? Oh, hello? Honey, are you there? Ah! Am I too late? I'm too late, right? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> You're here for Venus and Fur. Everybody went home half an hour oh, ago. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I got caught, like, way uptown, and then my cell went out, and then my fucking heel gets stuck in one of those sewer cover thing whatevers. And then there was this guy on the train, I don't even want to tell you about him, rubbing up against my ass the entire trip. <laughs> then it starts to pour, I get so through to the fucking skin. God, fuck. Fuck, you know, just my luck. <laughs> 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 uh, do you feel any prescriptions for you? Or? I'm okay, <laughs> just my usual luck is all. <laughs> Thank you, God, once again. <laughs> Hi, sorry, Vonda Jordan. Uh, Vonda? You see what I mean? I've even got her name. I mean, how many women in this town are named Vonda? Actually, I'm Wanda, but my parents call me Vonda. Anyway, I'm like, I'm like a perfect organized part. And the fucking train gets stuck in a tunnel while some guy's trying to penetrate me and talk about fate. And you are? Thomas Novacek. Hi. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, Miss Novacek, you wrote this. Yes, I did. Well, I, I adapted it. And you're directing it too, right? In an inch of its life. Oh, God, I love your plays. I, I mean, the ones I know. Uh, <laughs> I know the shadows, like, uh, wow, Anatomy of Shadows was amazing. I saw it twice. I didn't write Anatomy of Shadows. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I mean, the other one got this. <laughs> anyway, this play sure is amazing. I mean, the parts of it I read, pretty <laughs> <laughs> sexy, like pretty wild stuff, or like, you know, erotic if you're into humiliation. <laughs> By the way, I don't usually walk around in my tight leather clothes and a dog collar. Usually I'm really demure and shit, just thought I'd kind of get into character, you know? I mean, it's basically S&M, right, the play? Not exactly, and it does take place in 1870. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess this isn't due 1870, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, maybe s and is dressed just like this back then. Anyway, here's, here's, here's my headshot. I know the resume's kind of skimpy, but I'm good. I'm, like, made for this part. I swear to God, I'm amazing at Pat a gabbler. The urinal theater. I somehow missed their season. Um, you had an appointment? Yeah, 2.15. It's like hours ago, right? Well, better late than whatever. Uh, Vonda. <laughs> Jordan, people always say, is that real? Vonda Jordan. I don't see your name. Really? My agent said they set it up and everything. I'm not down here. 2.15, shit! Thank you, God, once again! Well, anyway, Geronimo. Wait, 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 wait. What are you, what are you doing? I brought some costume stuff. No, 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 Vonda, I... No, it, it'll just take me a sec. I swear I found this great dress, real period shit. No, really, <laughs> don't, don't bother, okay? What? You mean, don't read? I, I mean, don't read. Yeah, but as long as I'm here, I might as well, like, give it a go, right? There's no 
but we need to give it a go with. The reader's gone home. I'll read with you. Oh, it's always an honor to read with the actual author. Adapter. Getting the play straight from the horse's mouth is always so cool. Come on, what have you got to lose? I'm already here. Stop, stop, and... stop. To tell you the truth, Miss, um... Bonda? We're looking for somebody a little different. Yeah, what are you looking for? Well, somebody with a little more... Uh, how should I put this? Um... Somebody who's not me. <laughs> I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm too big. I'm too small. My resume is not long enough. God fuck! Mm. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It's been really stressful today, you know? Anyway, how do you know who I am or what I can do? Oh, we're gonna be scheduling more auditions sometime soon. Yeah, but I'm here, aren't I? Can't you just save yourself the time tomorrow or whatever? Save me the time getting here from the middle of nowhere? No, look, Vonda. It has been a very long day for me today. Okay, I'm exhausted. I'm kind of frazzled this time, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I also just auditioned a living Penelope of outcasts for this part, including one girl who had steel teeth. You, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to audition for me right now. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, this time of the day I always unravel a little anyway. Okay. I also have a, I love someone at home waiting for me for dinner. Oh, no, sure, I understand. This will be a lot better when I'm fresh. Look, thank you very much anyway for coming in, and, uh, well, congratulations on the outfit. <laughs> it's very striking. <laughs> and we'll see you again. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> thank you for saying so, though. You seem like a really nice person. It's just the business, you know, the goddamn fucking business. Plus, I had to put out ten bucks at Screaming Weenies on this fucking dress. I mean, isn't that real 1870-whatever? It is very 1870-whatever. Uh, and isn't that her? Isn't that, like, total Vonda? I figured she'd wear one of those long-ass dresses because everybody hated their body back well, then. Well, actually, that's a, that's a common misconception about the 19th century. Well, can't I just show it to you how I look? Oh, please, God, please, pretty please. No, 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 wait, Vonda, I... Hi, honey. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I lost you. It must be the storm. No. No! No, 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 no not, not you. Yeah, no, somebody just walked in. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I doubt it. Listen, I'll, I'll be headed out in a couple of minutes. I'll, I'll pick you up something on the way. <laughs> no, no, I got the boat. Yeah. Uh huh. Love you too. <laughs> Ciao. Could you do me up back here? <laughs> <laughs> German. I bet you read it in German. I did, actually. <laughs> anyway, the book was a huge scandal in 1870. Well, yeah. sure. Basically, it's s and porn. It's not s and porn. You don't think it's porn? <laughs> <laughs> For medieval times, 18-whatever. Venus 
Citizen Fur is a great love story, okay? It's a serious novel. It was a central text of world literature. Sure, he thought he wrote a serious novel. Everybody else thought it was porn. <laughs> so, like, where, like, are we? Like, we are like at a remote inn somewhere in Carpathia on the eastern edge of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The Austro-Hungarian Empire. Remind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's complicated. But the place is beautiful, right? Oh, it's a hell spot for the rich. It's fantastic. It lights up. Krzyzewski's reading in his room, having his morning coffee, and knock, knock, knock. Vonda enters. Oh, and that's symbolic, right? <laughs> for his character. I mean, he's reading. Uh, um, you know, some people do read. <laughs> Even today, sometimes pages made of actual paper. Oh, ouch! You got me. <laughs> <laughs> and this Kushemsky is what? Throw me some, like, adjectives. Uh, he's one of the shiftless rich of his day. He's well-traveled, cultivated, literate, intelligent. All in his head? If you will. If you will. I love that. <laughs> When's the last time I heard something like that? If you will. <laughs> so he's the staying gay, kind of like you. Well, don't you want to know about her? Oh, I think I know about her, but sure, if you want. I'd say Vonda's a typical young woman of her time, in spite of her professed principles. In spite of? Her professed principles. Um, she's outwardly fairly proper, probably quite poised, also cultivated. Yeah, well, all that's pretty clear from the pages. What else can you tell me? Got any, like, insights about her, anything I don't know? Never mind, I'll think about it. So I guess this is our so-called divan. Mm -hmm. Oh, and what's this? A maypole, a phallic symbol. A maypole on the heating system from when this place was a sweatshop. Oh, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. What? My fur, she's wearing a, a fur stole when she comes in. Isn't she? She is. Okay. There we go. Soft fur. Soft fur. <laughs> so, where am I? Where do you want me? Looks comfortable. No, tell me. Uh, why don't you stand right there? <laughs> do you want to read the scene over? Nope, let's wing it. How far should we go? Just to the bottom of page three. That's it? Oh, then you'll kick me out, right? Oh, well, let's find our way through this first. In other words, yes. <laughs> oh, hey, one last thing. This quotation on page, like, zero here. The epigraph? Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord hath smitten him, and delivered him into a woman's hands. What is that? Uh, it's, it's quoted a couple times in the novel. It's from the book of Judith. Is that the Bible? <laughs> yes, Judith is from the apocrypha of the Bible. Sorry, not my area. <laughs> anyway, it's pretty sexist, isn't it? Well, the Lord hath smitten him and delivered him into a woman's hands. Uh, you know, I'm only quoting Sakur Masak's book. Yeah, but you included it on page zero here like it was the whole point. Never mind, never mind, none of my business. I'm just an actrice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I change lights? I hate fluorescence. Uh, oh, please, make yourself at home. I did not realize there was a whole system up there. <laughs> oh, hey, one last thing. It's 18... whatever. Do you think Vonda would have one of those phony transatlantic accents? Never mind, I'll just try it. <laughs> Ink spot. Ink spot. Ink spot. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> turn around. Go on, turn around. You're reading. You don't see me. Okay, morning in Transylvania. Morning in Transylvania. Are you ready? Knock, knock, knock. Come in. Ed, Dr. Severin von Kuschensky. I am Vonda von Dunayev. I'm staying in the room above yours. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I found this book in the birch grove last night. 
A copy of Faust with your book taken inside. Oh, thank you. I was just asking the maid about that. Yes, I would have sent it by maid, but I couldn't help but noticing this rather provocative picture inside. Is it a, a Raphael? It's a Titian. Venus with mirror, a favorite painting of mine. Your Venus is as well thumbed as your Faust. Is she faithful? I'm sorry? To the original. Uh, to my mind, that woman is Venus. It's a faithful copy of the painting, if that's what you mean. I can certainly understand your fascination. The plush red velvet, the dark fur outlining her naked body, the bracelets cuffing her wrists, her golden breasts, the pictures ravishing. But is Venus covering herself with the fur, or is she opening the fur to reveal her glories? We'll never know. Both, I suppose. Well, thank you for returning it. I also couldn't help but noticing this rather intriguing poem scrawled on the back. Did you write this poem? It's just a bit of doggerel. Doggerel? Hardly. To love and be loved. Ah, what a bliss. And yet there glows a greater joy, the torment of that woman's kiss who makes us her slave, her footstool, her toy, who renders me a cringing cur, my goddess, my dictator, Venus in fur. Interesting sentiments. I'd guard this bookmark well if I were you. Uh, well, I appreciate your discretion. <laughs> Here's your Faust with your Venus all safe and sound, and behold, you're complete again. Thank you. May I take your foot? That's very kind. It's Tartar, isn't it? Caucasian sable, probably from Kazakhstan? Caucasian sable from Kazakhstan, precisely. Ah, Kushemsky stands there, staring at the fur in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I have not disturbed you trotting across your ceiling with my heels. Not at all. Trod with your heels as hard as you like. So you're a poet, Herr Kushemsky. A dreamer. I'm a dilettante, if anything. In my life, I've stretched a score of canvases, but painted nothing. You might say I live the way I paint and write poetry, as an amateur. Your knowledge of fur seems far more than amateur. You knew my soul intimately, and you two had only just met. Well, the love of furs and... You know what? I can actually skip all this. No, no, read it. The love of furs and Nate, it's a passion. Come on, you... get into it. <laughs> <laughs> the love of fur is innate. It's a passion given by nature to us all. Who doesn't know the addictiveness of stroking a thick, soft fur that peculiar tingle, that electricity. What is a cat but a walking galvanic battery with claws? Well said. Yet somehow I suspect there's more to this love of fur than Renaissance aesthetics. Perhaps your mother swallowed you in sable as a baby? I'm sorry I'm prying. Actually, I had an aunt who was very fond of fur. Well there, that explains everything. We're all easily explicable. What we're not is Easily extricable. Extricable from... That's the bottom of page three. Oh, okay. Uh, right, right, right. That, that, was, that was good, Vonda. Oh, I was just stumbling around trying to get into it. You didn't seem to be stumbling. Well, that's good acting for you. I tell you, I'm a grow. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, shucks. No, I'm not saying it was perfect. It no. Was... Sure. Um. <laughs> let's, uh, let's read on a little. Um, there's this big speech, but we can skip to Oh, no, no, read it. Do you mind? It'll red me up. You're a good actor, Thomas. I'm just faking it. No, I mean it. You're really good. Do you have a guy to play Kushemsky? 
Uh, not yet. I mean, we have a few possibilities. You should play him. <laughs> right. No, I mean it. You'd be terrific. This is hard. I can't believe I put actors through this. It's You're a playwright. You're a director. It's your job to torture actors. <laughs> First time director. You never know it. I I'm only doing this because no playwright ever seems to get things exactly right. Having lived through one misguided production after another. Oh, but that's why you're so perfect. You can make it right. You can guide it. Yeah, I've got it all plotted out, too. I'm going to use Alvin Berg's Lyric Suite for transition music. Oh, yeah, that's great. Oh, do you know the Lyric Suite? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you see what I mean? You understand this stuff from the inside and the people. But maybe for Kushemsky you should try it. I don't know, like an accent or something? Um, be more continental? Be more continental, that's it. Um, <clears throat> uh, be, be more, be, be more continental. <laughs> is this continental or is this idiotic? It's great. <laughs> it's a little idiotic, but it's great. <laughs> you didn't happen to bring a frock coat along, did you? Oh, I did! Do you want to try it on? <laughs> <laughs> I was only joking. No, here! It'll help you see if it fits. Well, it's, it's beautiful. Is it real? You said it's vintage. Siegfried Muller, Vienna, 1869. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Three bucks. Not bad, huh? <laughs> sure looks good on you, too. How does it feel? It feels good. Mm. Looks, looks like it was it. made for you. Hello, did, gorgeous. How much did the dog collar cost you? Oh, this? This is left over from when I was a prostitute. Ha <laughs> 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 I'm kidding! <laughs> Actually, I, <laughs> I had an aunt who was very fond of fur. Well, there, that explains everything. We're all easily explainable. What we're not is easily extricable. Extricable from? From what we are, from what the world has made us. And that <laughs> thing that fixes us only takes an instant, the overturning of a dragonfly's wing, to quote one of the Greeks. <laughs> one innocent instant, and you are different forever. How's the coffee? I've hardly tasted it, but except the text on it so far. Oh, and that's symbolic, right? I mean, he's the coffee. She's only had like a sip, but he's got her all intrigued. Oh, shucks. You saw right through me. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have an innocent infant, uh, Severin Kushansky? Uh, I did, actually, very early on. But this is no interest to you. Oh, no, I'm enthralled. It's like one of those English mystery stories. I await the mysterious aunt who was fond of fur. I, I really can't skip this next no, speech. No, read it's not... it. I want to hear it. I await the mysterious aunt who was fond of fur. I was an impossible child, sickly as an infant and spoiled by my parents. I spent my childhood reading in the library and tormenting our servants and our cat. Then, when I was twelve, an aunt of mine came for a visit. The Countess was a regal woman, voluptuous, imperious, and terrifying. She refused. Uh, you know. What? <laughs> nothing. It's just. It's different, you know, like actually saying the words out loud. It's not like, you know, typing them on a screen at 2.02 2 a.m. No, 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 you're doing fine. You're doing good. Your aunt's come for a visit, and she is what? A regal woman. Voluptuous, imperious, and terrifying. She refused in a thousand ways to indulge my moods. I took against her. I insulted her. I called her Messalina. Well, she took her revenge. My, 
parents went off one day and my aunt comes striding into the library wearing an enormous Russian cape of black fox fur and in her hand carrying a length of fresh green birch. The cook and the scullery maid follow close behind. My aunt throws off her fur and rolls up her sleeves revealing sleekly muscled arms. I try to escape but the other two women grab me, overwhelm me. They fling me down onto the fur and pull down my pants. I struggle, but it's no use. Those two women hold me hand and foot while my aunt lays into me with the cane. The birch whistles in the air again and again as the blows descend. The backs of my legs and naked backside are on fire, each stroke laid on by a, by a true artist. I try to be heroic, but she keeps whipping until I'm weeping outright, sobbing and begging for her mercy. Then, threatening to return for more, she takes her leave. From that hour forward, a fur can never just be a fur, nor a length of birch an innocent switch. You see, in that room, in that moment, by that woman, I was made. And did she return? You might say she did. For every night thereafter, the Countess Aunt visited me in my dreams, carrying a birch cane and wearing a fox fur to continue her punishment. Exquisite despot. You poor, poor man. Am I? In, in a way, I couldn't be richer knowing all I know, having been taught at her feet. And what have you learned? That there can be nothing more sensuous than pain, or more pleasurable than degradation. The Countess had become my ideal, you see, my ideal woman, my ideal mate, an avatar of the goddess of love herself. I've been on the hunt for her double ever since, and of a woman of her delicious cruelty. And on the day I meet that woman, I shall marry her. Thomas! <laughs> that speech is brilliant! Okay, oh. I didn't mean I spent enough time on it. It's oh, so actually this play is like all about child abuse? What? And whoa, whoa, hey! No, 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 this play is not about child abuse, Jesus Christ, no. God, this idiotic urge these days to make everything about some trivial social issue, it's... Child abuse isn't exactly trivial. No, okay, no, no, it's not <laughs> trivial, but it's... <laughs> You're being trite. Let's not be trite, all right? This is not anthropology or sociology, this is a play. Yeah, Ah, uh, don't I... generalize. Okay, there's a lot more going on here than than corporal punishment issues. Okay, sorry. God, this, this stupid, impoverished world we live in. Why are we so eager to diminish ourselves? As if we're nothing more than, than, than proof of Freud, or proof of whatever, dime store psychologies and People Magazine this week. What are you gonna throw me next? Race, class, and gender? You ought to write all that up and send it to the Times. I did, they didn't print it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Well, you certainly are unique. But I'd be careful if I were you. When you obtain your ideal, she may be crueler than you care for. I'm willing to take the risk. Anyway, there you have me, whatever that makes me. I know what you are. You're a super sensualist, an ascetic voluptuary. And you, Frau von der von Dunayev, who or what are you? I'm a pagan. I'm a Greek. I love the ancients because they're not like the moderns who live in their minds, and because they're the opposite of the Christians who live on a cross. I don't live in my mind or on a cross. I live on this divan, in this dress, in these stockings, and in these shoes. I want to live the way Helen of Aspasia lived, not the twisted women of today who are never happy and never give happiness. Why should I forego any possible pleasure of staying? I'm young, I'm rich, and I'm beautiful, and I shall make the most of that. I shall deny myself nothing. Well, I certainly respect your devotion to principle. I don't need your respect, excuse me. <laughs> I shall love a man who pleases me and please a man who makes me happy but only as long as he makes me happy and not a moment longer. 
To a man, there's nothing crueler than a woman's infidelity. To a woman, there is. The enforced fidelity of men. Uh, can I move around? Oh, yes, move, move. Uh, <clears throat> in our society, a woman's only power is through men. Her character is her lack of character. She, she's a blank to be filled in by creatures who at heart despise her. I want to see what woman will become when she ceases to be man's slave, when she becomes men's equal in education and partner in work, when she becomes herself an individual. Donald Vonda was really ahead of her time, wasn't she? <laughs> Leopold von Sacher Masak was Vonda. How did you learn all those lines? I don't know. I'm a pretty quick study. What, a quick study flipping through it on the train? You know it by heart. Yeah, but you said Vonda was proper in spite of her, what was it, her professed something. Uh, or her professed principles. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't think she means all this? Well, I mean, she, she says she does, you know, like, r women's rights, uh, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> <laughs> so you think she's lying? Like she's putting on a show? Uh, I'm just wondering why you said professed principles and not just, you know, principles. It must have been all those beautiful peas. Mm, sold your soul for a mess of peas, huh? Guilty. <laughs> In our society, a woman's only power is through men, yada, yada, yada. I want to see what woman will become when she ceases to be man's slave. When she becomes herself an individual. You only say that because you yourself are so individual. A man usually says that to a woman whose individuality he's about to undermine. <laughs> if you don't mind me saying so, you are not only a pagan and a Greek and an individual. You seem to me to be a goddess. Really? <laughs> Which one? Venus. Oh, and she really is Venus, right? Am I crazy? She's like Venus in disguise. Come down to get him to like torture him? Well, uh, not exactly. Okay, not really. It's. I guess you wanted it ambivalent. Am ambiguous? Ambiguous. <laughs> well, it, it's the same story as the Bacchae. Oh, it? yeah, right. What's the Bacchae? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kidding. It's an old play, right? It's, it's an old Citizens play. of Corinth. One of those plays. Behold! This mortal man, testiculus, cursed <laughs> and totally fucked for all eternity. Yes, it's one of those plays. The god Dionysus comes down and reduces Pentheus, the king of Thebes, to a mass of quivering feminine jelly in a dress. Sounds hot. Uh, the crazy <laughs> the uh, tear Pentheus to shreds and Dionysus leaves triumphant. Right. Yeah, I, I think I saw that. Uh, except here, it's not Dionysus, it's Aphrodite. Right. Remind me. Uh, Aphrodite's the Greek version of Venus. The same person. Same goddess. Mm. Yeah. Hail Aphrodite! <laughs> Hail Aphrodite! Mm. Uh, am I insufferably pedantic? I... Yup. <laughs> what? <laughs> but it's kind of cute. What are we doing? You seem to me to be a goddess. Really? Which one? Venus. But could Venus's pagan principles work in our more civil century? And without slaves? The Greeks only lived as freely as they did because they had slaves. Well, then I seem to be in need of one. Would you be my slave as Severin von Kushemsky? Happily. Give me a woman honest enough to say, I am Pompadour, I am Borgia, I am the woman to whom you are bound, and I'll kneel to her. But where would Aphrodite find her master today? No man is worthy of dominating a goddess. He's only worthy of being subjugated by one. Subjugate me. What, in love with me already? Profoundly. And suffering as if I had known you all my life. Stand up. Stand away from me. I must say you do intrigue me. I like your clarity of thought and your depth of knowledge and your great feeling. Physically, you are not unattractive. <laughs> but when a man submits to me, I see a trick. 
This is no trick. Only love me. You see orders already. Marry me. I'm a frivolous woman, Herr Kuschemsky. You'd have to be very brave to love me. You'd only try to wrest power away from me, as every lover does. You don't really know a thing about me. It's absurd. Why waste time in the struggle? I hand all power over to you in advance, now and forever, unconditionally. Do with me what you will. Beat me if you like. Oh, this is certainly novel. Stand over there. What? Uh, stay, stay next to the divan. It feels better from here. Well, I think you should stand over there. You're taking power. Take a power position. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is certainly novel. No, it feels awkward. No, stay there and try it. <laughs> I hand all power over to you in advance, now and forever, unconditionally. Do with me what you will. Beat me if you like. Well, this is certainly novel. You're not trying. You wanted me here. You got me here. I'm saying the line. And hey, it's an audition. Yeah, it's also an audition to see if you can take direction. Now stand there and try it. I hand all power over to you in advance, now and forever, unconditionally. Do with me what you will. Beat me if you like. Well, this is certainly novel. God, you're so right. It does feel so much better from here. This is the <laughs> of men and women. Let the one who would kneel, kneel. Let the one who would submit anyway, submit now. What do you want in your heart of heart of hearts? In less than nothing. To be your property and vanish in your sublime essence. To dress and undress you. To put on your stockings and the shoes on your feet. You call that love? Of the highest sort. The kind that most people reserve for the gods. In love, as in politics, Vonda, one partner must rule. One must be the hammer, the other the anvil. I willingly accept being the anvil. Uh, sh should I stop? No, I, I, I love it. You've got the insight, especially about women. Thomas, you really understand women. Here's a study. <laughs> uh, where, where was I? <laughs> yes. Great love is born of opposites, Vonda. I seek pain and you pleasure. And you who seek pleasure must never defer to anyone's feelings. You must indulge yourself ruthlessly. You must rule without pity. You must use a lover as he would use you. You must rule him. You must wring him dry. You're fantastic. You won't take me as your husband and take me as your slave. Treat me with divine cruelty, because as a goddess, you have the right to. Why would I mistreat a man who loves me? Because it make me worship you even more. I don't want to be worshipped. That's the first lie that's past your lips. Every woman wants to be worshipped, just as our creator does. So create me, ruin me, annihilate me. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello? Hi. No, I'm still here. No, 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 everything's good. Yeah, everything's good. Um, well, I, I, I don't know, maybe in a few minutes? Yeah, I, I'll call you when I'm on my way. Yeah. Yeah, love you too. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, excuse me. Hi. Yeah, I'm fine. The audition went okay. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. I'm at the temp agency now. They think they might have a, a, a job for me, a, a night job. Yeah, dictaphone typing. <laughs> They're all night. Some legal firm, they have to get the contract in by morning, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I said I don't know. Bye. Jesus. Your significant other? Does anyone really still Say that? Sorry, what's modern for significant other these days? Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> You're wondering how come I lied, right? It's none of my business. What does Vonda say? Why should I deny myself anything? I got other fish to fuck, to point a phrase. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you all to what am I supposed to do? Say, yeah, okay, honey, anything you say, and get led around by the nose? This ain't about love. It's, it's about getting a piece of me. Well, you want the piece, you gotta put up with the rest of me. I mean, isn't that what this whole play is about? Is it? 
Oh, come on. Kushemsky loves it, getting led around by the nose. Oh, does he really? Would you stop that? You're so goddamn coy. It's like being on a fucking dance floor with you. I, uh, do you want some coffee? I can pour you some. Although it's probably tar by now. I can get you some. Do you want some? <laughs> what? You're not coming on to me now, are you, Tom? N no, I'm just... If you want some coffee. Is it symbolic coffee? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, real, it's, it's real coffee. What, what, live coffee. But what would your wife think if she knew that you were offering me some real live coffee? I'm not coffee? married. Oh, I off from the phone. No, that's my fiance. Same difference. What would your fiance think if she knew you were offering me some real live coffee? I mean, weren't you the guy who once said in some interview, working in the theater is the world's greatest way to get laid? I was a kid. It was my first interview. So you've never been married? Nope. Living with mom all these years? No, I, uh, I have a really old-fashioned kink, yeah. Fox furs? <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I have to fall in love. Ooh, that's a pretty serious kink. And the thing is, when I do fall, it... You go the whole nine yards, don't you? Instantly. <laughs> Bells and whistles, spots in front of my eyes, chaos, thunderbolts. <laughs> Let's get a devil. So coffee or no coffee? I could imagine giving myself to one man for life, but only if he commanded my respect. If he overpowered me with his strength, if he enslaved me, oh, I'd kneel to that man and bend my neck and be his slave. So it seems we're not a very good match, are we? We cancel each other out. I say we're created for each other. Don't you feel that, Vonda? Don't you feel it too? Let me propose a trial. A business deal, if you will. I'll give you one year to prove that you're the man for me. A year is a long time. Who's drawing up the terms now, you or I? Forgive me. Within that year, since you so rashly give me the choice of husband or slave, you will be my slave. Oh, so wow, she was like ready, huh? I mean, <laughs> I, mean I guess she was always ready before she even got there. Was she really? Would you stop that? You wrote it. You tell me. Okay, um, I, I don't know if she was ready, as you say, and, and I'm not being coy. Um, I guess you wanted it ambivalent. Ambiguous. <laughs> Ambiguous. Well, uh, from my perspective, uh, Kuchemsky's perspective, you may be my last chance. Maybe my only chance. I am? At what? At life. A uh, life that seems normal to someone like Kuchemsky. <laughs> yeah, basically, he's got this beat me, whip me kink, and he wants to see if she's up for it. He's auditioning her. She's auditioning him, too. <laughs> <laughs> Since you so rashly give me the choice of husband or slave, you will be my slave. Men being what men are, I'll draw up a contract defining the terms. Do you consent? To anything you demand. Here's my hand on it. They shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Greek who's come to town. Mm, a Greek? A real Greek. He rides a snow white stallion and wears high black leather boots. I want you to find out everything about him, where he comes from. Going to let this handsome animal pay court to me. But Vonda... What's this? Insurrection already? Pardon me. Meet me in the birch grove tomorrow by that statue of Aphrodite. At what time? You can wait for me there until I decide to arrive. And don't come unless you've found out about that Greek. Kiss my foot. <laughs> he kneels and... Kisses her foot. I love this moment. Just bang, kiss my foot. <laughs> you may put my fur on me now.
Severin, where will all this end? That is in your power, Frau von der Von Dunayev, not mine. When next I see you, will you? Will I what? Will you wear this? Will you wear fur? Thank you for the coffee, slave. Now I really do need some coffee in you. <laughs> Old Leo was pretty intense. All they do had to do was shake hands, and it's like mm, steamy. <laughs> <laughs> conversation itself was erotic. That wing conversation was all they got. But this isn't how it happens in the book. I mean. So you read it? You know Venus and Fur? Okay. So I found a copy and I kind of glanced at and it. And you were lying before us. So this is like based on something or okay, something? Okay, so I wanted some brownie points. Oh, your Venus is as well thumbed as your script. Well, you didn't just happen to find this and glance at it, did you? That was a lie too? Okay, so I kind of knew the book. How come you didn't put in that scene with Venus? When she appears to him at the beginning, naked, under a fur, in front of the fireplace? I, I didn't know how to fit it in. It, Oh, you could just stick it in at the top, so to speak. You can't do Venus and Fur without Venus. You could even have the same actress do it both. I'll do it. Naked on stage. Fuck, I'll take a freebie. <laughs> I'll think about it. <laughs> oh, we can improv. Maybe you'll get some ideas. Uh, okay. I'm Venus now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Imagine me. To help me. <laughs> Imagine me totally naked. You're not coming on to me now, are you, Fonda? Oh, come on, you're a big boy. Just think of me as fiance and improvise. I've never done this before. Oh, that's what all the girls say. Just <laughs> bullshit in character. <laughs> okay, set the scene. Where are we? Top of the show. Uh, well, uh, Kishemsky's room, the middle of the night. Middle of the night, 2.02 a.m. Maybe there's just one candle burning and, and a fireplace going stage left. And Kushemsky is what? Uh, he's writing in his diary. Oh, I like it! <laughs> He's sitting at his desk, writing in his diary, and um, maybe we see Venus in the raw, curled up like a cat, draped revealingly in fur. So drape me. You're the director. Revealingly. <laughs> now go to your desk. In character. <laughs> now write in your diary. Write something. I, I am. Out loud. This is theater. How else are we going to know what you are? Okay, it's the top of the show. The lights are just coming up. All we hear is the sound of an old clock. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, October 22nd, 1870, 2.02 a.m. I am staying at the spring, surrounded by woods and wilderness. I don't know why I, I feel so terribly alone and lonely, so... <laughs> sick at heart, so unfulfilled. Will no one draw me out of this abyss that bears my name? Severin von Kuschewski. Guten Abend, my dear. Well, well. Have the Germans invaded again? I hope I do not disturb. Not at all. Hail Aphrodite. Oh, so you have not forgotten me. Forget you? My oldest and dearest enemy. You are so sweet. Don't want to kiss my hand. Nice. 
Yeah, but Thomas. Did I say Thomas? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Severin, it is so cold in here. Every time I come to visit, I am catching a cold. That's you. Fly around naked all the time. Yeah, but I'm Venus. I must be all the time naked, or who knows who. You don't want to take off those scratchy clothes and come and cuddle? There's room here under my knee. No, thank you. But I brought this mink especially for you from Olympus. It's heavenly. You see the label? Made in heaven. <laughs> uh, why would I be so interested in your mink? Oh, Severin, I know your little hobby, your predilection for fine pelts. It's disgusting. You don't want a woman, you want her coat. You ought to marry a raccoon. Better a raccoon than any woman I've ever met. Yeah, but this mink and me, we make you the perfect wife. Yes, and then you and your mink will leave me to cuddle with some other man, as any mortal woman would. Yeah, but if under my mink I open my thighs, you would not have me? in Pompeii, you know. This is civilization. And what is that? Civilization. Civilization <laughs> is that we don't just open our thighs to just anybody. Ah, we have principles. Yeah, yeah, you modern men, you want your principles by day, and by night you want to dance naked around the fireplace. And me, you turn into a demon. We're so afraid of love. Love? Is that what you're offering? Uh-huh. That's what you want. You want to have me, and then you want to put your foot on my neck, like every petty tyrant in Pompeii. Well, I have a civilized duty to resist you. <laughs> and you still think you can? You think you will not bend to me? Never. You dare to resist me? Yes, I dare. Oh, you, you dust, you little piece of nothing. You dare to resist a goddess. The same way I've resisted you for years, ever since one of your sex first taught me the cruelty of women. Oh, Severin, I will have you crawling on your knees. I will have you begging. Never. You are mine already, and you will be mine for all time to come. Never. The proof, they say, is in the pudding. Auf Wiedersehen, mein Freund. I'll be back. There's Vonda, like Venus in disguise. It's taking her revenge. It's, it's great. So is it you? <laughs> what? <laughs> this? Is it you? Kushemsky, Novacek? Novacek, Kushemsky? No, 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 this isn't me. Or maybe you're Vonda. This play doesn't have anything to do with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're just <laughs> peeping over the fence. You're just the playwright. Oh, sorry. Adapter. Why do people always think that playwrights have to be the people that they write about? Because playwrights do that shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you put me in a play, I'll fucking kill you. Well, can't I just write characters? Uh-huh. And you just so happen to come across these two characters in this ancient German s and novel, <laughs> Air Dr. Novich. Uh, it's a famous book. Mm. So you didn't have an innocent instant? No. In a library? No. With a cat? No. 
Maybe you're still waiting for your big mom. Look, okay, I thought these characters were fascinating, okay? Very rich, very complex. Okay. I, I thought the story was dramatic, naturally theatrical. Oh, me thinks the lady doth protest too much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Mostly, I love the size of these people's emotions, okay? Nobody has emotions like this anymore, you know? Like, outsized emotions, operatic emotions. Vonda and, and, and Krzyzewski are like Tristan and Isolde, like... Paolo and Francesca, you know, no one's in total thrall like this anymore. No one's overcome by passion like this, or goes through this kind of rage. Meet some of my friends. Yeah, okay, maybe it's just me, but there are other people out there who don't know people with emotions like this, and, well, don't we go to the theater for passions that we don't get in life? I thought we're supposed to go to life for passions we aren't getting in life. All right, fine, I don't know anything. <laughs> so when you go home, fiancé doesn't tie you to the bed and take out a whip. No. <laughs> you should ask her. See if fiancé is up for Can you stop calling her fiancé? Sorry. How does your significant other feel about this plan? She isn't crazy about it. <laughs> probably worried you've got this whole kinky side and she doesn't want you to put it on because people will think it might be her or you. Well, it isn't her or me. Hmm. But let me guess about Stacy. Stacy. Hmm. She's a little younger than you. Good family, grew up in one of those old stone houses, Connecticut, Massachusetts, maybe. actually. <laughs> Southwestern Massachusetts, near the Connecticut border. <laughs> 20 minutes from Litchfield. Am I close? I have to admit. She's got a dog that you like okay, but that you could secretly do without. Name something biblical, like Seth, Ezra. <laughs> Noah, I thought you didn't know anything about the I Bible. I bet she's the breadwinner, too. I mean, a room with a pipe in the middle of it. Not exactly the big bucks on Broadway. But, hey, you're an artist, and she loves that about you. And she just knows you're going to be a great big success someday. <laughs> Plus, she appreciates you for your sensitivity. Maybe you're the first guy she's met who's got any. She reads a lot, same books you do. At, at night, you talk about what's new in French philosophy and what's going on in the New York Review of Books. And then you have some nice, quiet sex. A nice, quiet sex is fine, though there's this rumbling in the back of your head, this, this voice that wants something else. I don't know what that is, but rumble, rumble, rumble. But hey, you like her. You really, really like her. And you two are going to have a nice life talking about French philosophy and the New York Review of Books. And, and maybe you'll have a couple of kids who can do that when they grow up. And then you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Kushemsky. No. Should we read on? Yes, let's read. Um, when they meet the next day in the birch grove. Sure. Uh, this, uh, this will be the fountain, and uh, the, the, the pipe will be the statue of Thebes. Hail Aphrodite. 
Hail Aphrodite. Do you want to look the scene over? I no. Severin. No, no, no. It's not right. All this talk of subjugation, slavery. You've corrupted me with all your talk. I believe that in your heart of hearts you would enjoy controlling a man. No. You might even enjoy torturing him. No. Admit your nature. It's not my nature. You see what your nature is? Or change your nature. Can I not make you be reasonable? It's not reason that I'm after. You said you would forego no possible experience. And you would have me eat my work. I'd have you prove you meant that. Severin, don't you see? Don't you see you'll never be safe in the hands of a woman, of any woman? Ugh! Now this part is so sexist. It makes me, like, scream. Whoa, wait, hey, whoa, what's sexist about it? You'll never be safe in the hands of a woman? That is from the book. I don't care what it's from. It's sexist. The whole thing's really kind of trite when you think about what? it. What's trite? He gets spanked one day and, oh, bingo, he's into whips and chains. Well, apparently it happened to Soccer Masak. Did it happen to you? No! So how do you know? Okay, to me, this is a play about two people who are joined irreparably, okay? They're handcuffed at the heart. Yeah, joined by his king. No, by their passion. His passion. You're denying her passion. That's sexist, too. She's as passionate as he is, and this play is about how these two passions collide. What age are you living in? He brings her into this, and then she's the one who gets to look bad. She's the villain. There are no villains in this piece. It's a plea for people to understand that. This is a chemical reaction, okay? Two people meet and ignite each other. It's not making some general statement about men or women. Sex, class. Gender, pal. It's about a woman who recognizes something in herself, possibly, and about a man who, until he meets her, is forced to hide his true self away. Yeah, this prig! Why are you putting him down like because this? Because she's this very nice, this innocent person who comes wandering in. You don't understand. You, just, you don't understand. She I, says you corrupted me. Is she innocent? Or was this desire for domination always there? Maybe Kushemsky just brings it out of her. Yeah, maybe she's just a woman. This is like some old Victorian Teutonic tract against Dot's female. He forces her into a power play, and then he blames her. I, that is not what this play is about at all. That's not what it's about at all. And the play blames it her. It doesn't blame her. You don't see that? How does it blame her? No, it's blaming her on every page and every line. What happens at the end? She humiliates him one last time. She gets Count What's-His-Fuck to slap him around a little bit. She leaves Kruszewski there with his dick in his hand, and then she gets blamed for it, like he wasn't asking for it, like he didn't want it in the first place. I think old Kruszewski's hot for the count. That's what I think. <laughs> how can you be so, so stupid? Really, how can you be so good at playing her and be so fucking stupid about her and, and about everything else in this play? I mean, you, you fucking idiot! You, Fucking idiot woman! Oh, oh, yes! Idiot woman! Idiot actress! Ah. I think you owe me an apology, Buster. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me? I'm sorry. Got a little carried away. Yeah, well, can't take back what's been said. You might say this plays about be careful what you wish for. Yeah, because she might come walking in the door. Don't fuck with the goddess is what it's about. If you will. Oh. Sorry, what's modern for if you will? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing there's no such thing as a goddess. Or you'd be fucked, boy. Yes, okay, yes. I, I take all your points, you're right. I'm sorry. Can, can we read on? Would you mind, Fonda? Don't you understand? You'll never be safe in the hands of a woman. Of any woman. Tell me anything in the world you'd have me do. Anything in the world and it's done. Break off with me, Severin, before it's too late. Do you love me? I don't know. Well, find out. 
Prove that you did. How? By doing what every lover does. Hurt me. No, I, I find it repulsive, and I despise play acting. And I am not your countess aunt. I am I. Try that line again with fire. I am not your countess aunt. I am I. Again, defy him. What do you want from me, Thomas? I am not your fucking countess aunt. I am I. What do you want? I don't know. Because I don't think we're talking about this play anymore. I, um... Uh, I just want more, is all. Well, I'm not her. I'm just some dumb bitch who wandered in looking for a job. And I am not your countess aunt. I am I. How's that? It's good. It's very good. <laughs> Look. I, I don't think I can do this anymore. No. I'm sorry, it's too no, much. No, 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 wait. Vonda, stay, really stay. Say please. I've enslaved you, but you're the one who's enslaved me. You're more insidious than the greatest temptress who ever lived. It's like some wicked plot. It's really true, isn't it? Of what? He says she's got all this power, but he's the one with the control, not her. Uh, the more he submits, the more power he has over her. It's weird. Yeah, it's, it's intricate. Here's the contract we spoke about. It says that you will show me slavish submission under my orders without contradiction. That your mind and your body and your spirit as well as your soul and feelings belong to me. That you are in short a chattel in the possession of Vanda von Dunayev. Forever. Sign on the bottom. Well? I thought my service was for a year. Who's drawing up the terms now, you or I? May I read the contract? Why? Don't you trust me? Good. You'll address me from this moment forward as madam, and you'll spoke to me only when spoken to. You'll bring me all my meals and wait in the halls for my orders. Dress me in the morning and at night undress me, and from now on, I'm going to call you Thomas. Uh, it's Gregor in the script. I've changed it. <laughs> from now on, I'm going to call you Thomas. I want you in my footman's library wearing my coat of arms. As a gentleman. As a gentleman, you're bound to keep your word. Did you not just sign a contract swearing that you're my slave? Your slave, not your butler. I failed to see the distinction. Is this a game? This is what I am. I'm stubborn, I'm willful, and I'm greedy. And when I start something, I finish it. Give me your passport and your money. Vonda, I... She slaps his face. <gasps> Who gave you permission to call me that? Forgive me. She kisses him. She strokes his cheek. Did that hurt very much, darling? Exquisitely. Did you find out about that Greek? <laughs> the man's name is Alexis. At Athens, he's a count. He's beautiful, isn't he? He's... 
very attractive. I told you. I told you, Kushevsky's hot for the count. He's down for the count. <laughs> <laughs> I'm free to do as I like. Aren't I? Slave? Yes. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> she pulls down a knife. What is this, Portia? What are you think, doing? Did you think I didn't understand your little scheme? Did you think you could subjugate me? <laughs> no, Vanda, I swear well, I never... Well, you only knew how delicious this was. To have some random man in my control, and one that's smitten with me, no less. You know, <laughs> I ought to talk to actors' equity, because if you don't know by now if I've got the part... Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to give you the part. That's what you say now. <laughs> Do I get the part? And will you put it in writing? Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hi, 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 hi. Go yeah. to hell, Stacy! <laughs> says that to a woman whose magnificence he's about to undermine. Touche. Stacy doesn't shower at the gym. Doesn't she? She looked pretty wet the last time I saw her. <gasps> so let's go to the end. You'll need your footman's jacket. Comet! You've kept me waiting. Oh, I'm 
sorry, madame. I was uh, polishing the silver. Oh, don't you look dapper in that footman's jacket? Oh, thank you, madame. Well, turn around. Let me see. Oh, yes, you can make me lose all sense of right. You can make me forget you're nothing but a lackey. But I think something's still missing. Thomas. Where's that? That's not in the script. I'm improvising. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. The pièce de résistance. <laughs> Very fetching. <laughs> How does it feel? It feels good. I might just fall in love with you wearing that. What's the matter? Why are you looking at me like that? Does that mean you don't love me? Oh, you bore me. Whimpering all the time, you bore me. Oh, is it the Count? Are you in love with the Count? Can I help it that he followed me to Florence? That man doesn't love you. He's wanted you the same way he's wanted a thousand others. So what if he doesn't love me? Console yourself with that when I take him into my bed. Your heart is a vast stone desert. Insolent swine! How dare you speak to me in that tone? Bring me my other shoes. Yes, my love. In the bag, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, Thomas, I want you to call me mistress. It's more degrading. Yes, mistress. Hmm. I think tomorrow <laughs> I'll tie you to the post <laughs> in the backyard. And maybe I'll prick you with golden hairpins. Would you like that? Yes, mistress. Or maybe I'll harness you to the plow and drive you with a whip. Would you like that? Yes, mistress. You're doing very well, Thomas. I might just take you on as my servant permanently. Will there be anything else, mistress? Yes. One more thing. Call Stacy and tell her you won't be coming home tonight. I can't do that. Oh no? You can't? <laughs> and you can't tell her why either. No excuses, lame or otherwise. See, I won't be coming home tonight. I won't be coming home tonight. No excuses. No, I, I can't tell you why. Now say goodbye. Goodbye. Now hang up and turn off your phone. Isn't it wonderful? I'm sorry? Isn't it wonderful? Here, I mean. So nice and secluded, so much cozier than a hotel. I hardly know where I am, quite frankly. You have a whole life ahead of you now. We do. Minus all those other people. Here where I'm free to do as I like, just the two of us. The two of us and your friend, the Count. I do wish you would stop harping on him. I've been too nice to you, Thomas. That's the problem. I haven't disciplined you sufficiently. And now look what you've done. Just as I was about to take you into my bed. And here you would have me. Yes. I would have you. Come here. You see? For an hour I can let you imagine that you're a free man again. That you're my beloved, you simpleton. At some point, it will dawn on you that you're nothing, that you are, in fact, whatever I want you to be, a person, 
an animal, an object, a blank to be filled in, a void. No, I won't, I won't, I won't do this. I won't allow this to happen. I beg your pardon. Uh, I've uh, written you a letter. A letter? Ah, yes, breaking off with me, no doubt. Because suddenly you find the degradation you yourself begged for too much to bear. I don't have a handle <laughs> on this bit. I can't get this seat. Well, it seems pretty straightforward to me. How should it go? No, really, in your mind, how should it go? Um, uh, well, what's, what's his line? What's he say? What's the cue? I've written you a letter. A letter? Use some entertainment. Oh, that's good. That's good, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you do her. No. Yes. Oh, you've got more of a handle on her than I do. You created Vonda. You know her from the inside. Yeah, well, I don't know the part. Of course you do. <laughs> off of me and bring me my fan. <laughs> <laughs> Carefully, Thomas. I'm doing the best I can, mistress. Well, your best as always is not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be anything else, no. mistress? Mm, yes. <laughs> Prepare a bottle of champagne and two glasses. The Count will be here any moment. But, mistress... If you don't like my service, then leave. Get out of my sight! You bore me, do you hear? Will you take the count for a husband? I won't lie to you, Thomas. That man makes me tremble. <laughs> Beautiful. Cross back down. <laughs> I find him in my thoughts, and I can't shut him out. He makes me suffer, yet I love suffering. Turn. <laughs> if he asks me to be his wife, I will accept. Gorgeous. He's jealous of you, you know. I told him all about us. He probably threatened to kill you. Oh, he made his feelings perfectly clear. He struck you? You let him strike you? Yes, and I enjoyed it. More. Yes, and I enjoyed it. More. Give it to him. Yes, <laughs> I enjoyed it. Because you were a goddess. Now, You'd settle for this mannequin, this imitation man? You have no right to accuse me of anything. You wanted cruelty, and I've given it to you. And then I warn you time and time again, did I ever pretend how, how insane it was to surrender to me? If I enjoy torturing you, Thomas, that is your doing, not mine. <coughs> I am not this. You made me this, and now you blame it on me. If I can't have you, no other man will have uh, you either. What melodrama are you quoting? If you marry him, I'll kill you. I'll cut both of your hearts out and throw them to the dogs. God damn you, God damn you! Yes, Thomas, kill me, kill me! Oh, I love this fire in your eyes. I always knew you had it in you. Oh, my God, I adore you. Have you had enough of your ideal now? Is this goddess excused? Are you willing now to take your wife? Your Honest, faithful, and submissive wife. My wife, you mean. I don't, I don't know how you could still love me. I've been so awful to you. Vonda, you mean you were never serious. You mean it was all an act. My darling little idiot. Didn't you realize? Neil. Haven't you realized how hard it's been for me to hurt you? I only did all this to, to show you how much I loved you, to cure you. Mm. I'm the one who should be. be Bound and whipped. Oh, Thomas. Thomas, how I love you. I've loved you for, since the first moment I saw you. I, I couldn't tell you because I'm not what I seem. I'm weak. From so now on. You see. From now on. You're going to call me Master. Yes, Master. I think I'll tie.
occupy you with a pair of your stockings now. Would you like that? Yes, master. Go fetch them. <laughs> now, do you be what you will on me? Promise you'll never leave me. Stand over there. How I love you. I've wanted this since the first moment I saw you. Oh. Yes. Humiliate me. Degrade me. Yes. Lord. Oh, Thomas, Thomas, how I adore you. Please. Good. That's good, Tom, Tom. That's very good. But you see the problem here? Tommy. Any way you play this, any way you cut it, it's offensive to women. It's an insult. It's pornography. Vonda, uh, what are you talking just about? Just look at you. A maiden in distress, a mass of quivering feminine jelly. This helpless cunt submissively offering herself to a man Beat me, hurt me, I'm just a woman. No, Vonda, I swear. Ah. Say thank you for that. Thank <coughs> you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. What? Thank you, mistress. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? You thought you could dupe some poor, willing, idiot actress and bend her to your own little program. No. Create your own little female Frankenstein monster. You thought you could use me to insult me. No, Vonda, I swear, oh, I never meant- we dance to the glory of the gods. We dance to the glory of Dionysus. Hail the Bacchae, hail the Bacchae, hail you brave women of Thebes. God, God damn it, God damn it. How's your world not quite so diminished now, is it? Oh, Fuck! Yes, good emotion, strong, very operatic. Fuck! 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 Yes. More! What? Why did you come here? Was I ever here? Oh. Who are you? You know who I am. Now say it. Say it! Louder, please. Hail, Aphrodite. And the Lord hath smitten him and delivered him into a woman's hand. Hail, Aphrodite! 